Before we move forward, just like Pastor Kathy did, I think it's always good to look back in the rearview mirror to see where we've been before we move forward. And so last week, Pastor Lauren covered the first, that, that last portion of the second chapter of Exodus. You'll remember that Moses sees an Egyptian beating a Hebrew. He kills the Egyptian, hides the body in the sand. The next day, he reprimands two of the Hebrew people who are fighting, who ask him, who are you to tell us what to do? We know what you did. Moses flees to Midian, assists a woman who comes to the well. Moses finds favor with her father, marries the father's daughter, Zipporah, and together they have a son, Gershom, a name that reflects Moses' reality of being an alien living in a foreign land. The last three verses of the chapter tell us that after a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites, who are groaning under slavery, cry out. And that cry raises up to God, who hears their groaning. And God remembers the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God looks upon the Israelites and takes notice of them. Meanwhile, Moses is taking care of the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro the priest of Midian. Moses is learning new skills. He's keeping the flock and he is learning what it means to be a shepherd. He's out of his element. He's in a foreign land, working a seemingly ordinary job. Jethro's daughters are apparently involved in that work also because they had gone to the well to draw water for the flocks. And when the shepherds came to that well, Moses comes to the daughter's defenses and helps water the flock. And now Moses finds himself a shepherd tending the flock. That single verse, it seems like a breath in the drama that's about to unfold. To me, it seems like a Mr. Miyagi moment. If you remember the movie from 1984, The Karate Kid, some of you were not born be before that. <laughs> but let me remind you what happens in that movie. The original Karate Kid, which I think was the best, Daniel, who was played by Ralph Macchio, and his mother moved from Newark, New Jersey to Los Angeles. Their apartment handyman, Mr. Miyagi, played by Pat Morita, agrees to train Daniel in karate. Daniel is immediately put to work doing a number of tasks which seem to have no bearing on his education, and we come to that famous scene in which Daniel discovers that painting the fence has taught him defensive moves. Waxing the car, wax on, wax off, has helped with other moves. He had been immersed in the ordinary, but yet prepared for what was to come. Moses is immersed in the ordinary. He's taking care of sheep, herding them through the wilderness, listening and responding to the cries of his flock. When they're hungry, he finds food. When they're thirsty, he leads them to water. It's a premonition of what is to come, for soon Moses will be leading the Israelites through the wilderness with his staff in hand, listening to them and responding to them, feeding them and finding water through the grace of God. The skills that Moses gains as a shepherd will help him fulfill the call that he is about to receive. We find shepherds throughout the Bible. Shepherds can be leaders like David, the youngest of brothers who takes care of the sheep in the fields. David slays the giant and becomes king. Some shepherds are communicators. The angels first announce the birth of Christ to the shepherds who come and celebrate what they've been told. Shepherds can fight against the status quo. One writer says that shepherds were anti-establishment figures. Genesis 46.34 states, 
all shepherds are abhorrent to the Egyptians. With Moses' shepherd's staff in his hand, with Moses raised in Pharaoh's house, he will soon lead people out of Egypt and towards the promised land. Moses will take his staff, and when God tells him to throw it down, it'll be turned into a snake, and when he picks up that snake, it turns once again into a staff. Moses will raise the staff, and the Red Sea will part, and people will walk through on dry ground. When people cry out for water in the desert, an overly exuberant Moses will hit the rock and water will flow out. But those are all previews of what's to come. Taken from the ordinary, Moses will soon do the extraordinary work that God has set before him. Here, Moses is leading the flock. And notice how it's written. He leads the flock beyond the wilderness. Not through the wilderness, but beyond the wilderness to Horeb, the mountain of God. Here the word ashar is used, which means the hinder parts of the wilderness. It's not just in the wilderness, it's beyond the wilderness. He has taken already a circuitous route through the desert, and already he has a destination in mind, Mount Horeb, which is also known as Mount Sinai, known as the mountain of God. Spoiler alert. Coming to this mountain is a foreshadowing of the Exodus passage and God, Yahweh, giving the Ten Commandments to the people. But that's just a preview of what's coming this summer. (laughs) Moses leads this flock to Mount Horeb, and there he encounters the angel of the Lord in the midst of a burning bush, a bush that's blazing but it's not consumed. It's here that the writer of Scripture offers Moses one of his great soliloquies. Moses says, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why this bush is not being burned up. God sees that the bush has caught Moses' attention and calls out to him, Moses, Moses, and Moses says, here I am, here I am. When God calls out to Jacob, Jacob replies, here I am. When God calls out to Samuel from the quietness of the night, Samuel responds, here I am. When Isaiah hears the voice of the Lord calling, whom shall I send? Who shall go for us? Isaiah says, here I am. When the angel of God calls to Mary to be the mother of Jesus, she replies, here I am. Moses replies, here I am, stating that he is listening and he is willing to reply and respond to God's call. God says, don't come any closer. Take off your sandals for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And in that Moses hides his face in awe of God who is before him. Moses comes to the mountain seeking an encounter with God, and he finds himself standing on holy ground. Something that's unique to this particular encounter is the angel that appears in the burning bush. That angel remains silent. God chooses to speak directly to Moses, who responds and hides his face in awe of God who is there on the mountainside with him. The Lord then tells Moses, I have seen, I have heard, I have known, I remember. I have seen, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard the cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. I remember them. I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians. So come, Moses, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. God is not presenting Moses with a job offer. This is not a job offer for Moses. This is a call for Moses to participate in the redemptive work of God. It won't be easy, 
Remember, Moses needs to return to the land that he fled from to speak to injustice, to, to face Pharaoh, the one whose predecessor once sought to have him killed. Throughout life, we face our own holy moments, encounters where one moment we are standing in the midst of our ordinary, everyday life. And then God catches our eye. God burns within our hearts. Our hearts are on fire, but they're not consumed. And we encounter injustice and we see need. We are moved to act and God calls out to us saying, I see, I know, I hear, I remember the promise. Come, I am going to send you. As ordinary parents and members of this church, as individuals who are part of this community, God is calling us, each one of us, to the ministry of living up to our baptismal vows. That's no small task. As ordinary people, God is calling you to be ordained and installed into the work and ministry of the church. That is no small task. As God's children, God is calling us to be the church by building each other up, by fighting racism, eradicating poverty. That is no small task. It's not a job offer. This is God's call for you to participate in the redemptive work that God has placed upon your hearts. And all you have to say is, here I am. And suddenly, you'll find yourself standing on holy ground. Amen.